Lesson 4.2c, using reciprocals to divide fractions. We can use reciprocals to find equivalent values. We have 3 fifths divided by 2 fifths. And it's telling us that the quotient is 3 halves. We have the dividend, the divisor, and the quotient. We can use the reciprocal of the divisor, 2 fifths, as 5 halves and multiply 3 fifths times 5 halves. We multiply straight across. 3 times 5 is 15. 5 times 2 is 10. We simplify using the greatest common factor, which is 5, and we get 3 halves as the product. So by multiplying this dividend by the reciprocal of the divisor, we got a product that was the same as the quotient. Multiplying the dividend by the reciprocal of the divisor will make a product that is equivalent to the quotient. So here's another example. We have 1 half divided by 1 6. We multiply by the reciprocal of the divisor. Remember, the reciprocal is a flipped upside down version of that fraction. We get 1 times 6 is 6. 2 times 1 is 2. We simplify it. 6 divided by 2 is 3. Therefore, 1 half divided by 1 6 is equal to 3. The reciprocal needs to be of the divisor. If we use the reciprocal of the dividend, the product won't be equivalent to the quotient. The answer will be wrong. So here, we use the reciprocal of the divisor. 1 6 is the divisor. We flip it around and do 6 over 1, and we multiply. We get 6 halves. We simplify it using the greatest common factor for 6 and 2, which is 2. We get 3 over 1. And when we simplify that, that's 3 whole. We can even check this with multiplication. We have a 3 over 1 right here times 1 sixth, the divisor. And it should equal 1 half. We can use cross canceling. And we have a 3 here and a 6 here. 3 times 1 is 3. And 3 times 2 is 6. We used 3 as our common factor. Now we multiply 1 times 1, which is 1. 1 times 2 is 2. It's 1 half. It's the same as our dividend. We know we did it correctly. If we do the reciprocal of the dividend, instead of 1 half times 6 over 1, we have 2 over 1 times 1 six. And when we multiply straight across, 2 times 1 is 2. 1 times 6 is 6. We now have 2 6, and when we simplify it, we get 1 third. That's not 3 whole. And if we try multiplying 1 third times 1 6, it's supposed to equal 1 half the dividend. But when we multiply 1 third times 1 6, we get 1 18th. That is not correct. It's supposed to be 1 half. So it cannot be the reciprocal of the dividend. It has to be the reciprocal of the divisor. This second term right here is the divisor. That's the one we flip around as the reciprocal. A unit fraction has 1 as its numerator. These are all unit fractions. They all have a 1 for a numerator. And we could keep going on. We can even say 1 99th. We can have 1 over a trillion if we wanted to. That would still be a unit fraction. The reciprocal of a unit fraction will have 1 as its denominator. And we know we can write a whole number as a fraction by putting 1 as its denominator. That means it will be an integer, a negative or positive whole number. The reciprocal of a unit fraction will be a negative or positive whole number, an integer. Here we have a word problem. A pitcher contains 3 fourths quart of lemonade. If an equal amount is poured into six glasses, how much lemonade will each glass contain? So we think we need to divide 3 fourths into six equal size parts. We have 3 fourths divided by 6. We rewrite the 6 as a fraction. We can write it as a 6 over a 1. And now we multiply by the reciprocal 
of 6 over 1, which is 1 6. It's now a unit fraction, and we multiply straight across. 3 times 1 is 3, 4 times 6 is 24. We have 3 24 ths that needs to be simplified. We can use the greatest common factor for 3 and 24, which is 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 24 divided by 3 is 8. It's 1 8 quart, because that's the measure we were using. So each glass will have 1 8 quart. Here we have another word problem that has a couple of steps to it. A ribbon is 7 8 meter in length. 1 6 meter pieces are needed for an art project. What's the greatest number of 1 6 meter pieces that can be cut from this ribbon? So we think we need to divide 7 8 by 1 6. And we can multiply by the reciprocal of the divisor. We have 7 8 divided by 1 6. We do 7 8 times 6 over 1. 7 times 6 is 42. 8 times 1 is 8. We have 42 eighths. We need to simplify this. We think 42 divided by 8. Or how many 8 eighths are in 42 eighths? Well, I know 5 times 8 is 40, so there's 5 whole with 2 eighths left over. That's 5 and 2 eighths. We can simplify this further as 5 and 1 fourth. 5 and 1 fourth represents the number of 1 sixth meter pieces. So we have 5 pieces, 5 whole pieces, that are 1 sixth meter in length, and 1 fourth of a 1 sixth meter piece. So the greatest number of 1 sixth meter pieces that can be cut from the ribbon is 5. That's our answer, 5 because that's only one-fourth of a one-sixth piece. It's not enough. We get five full one-sixth meter pieces. So how much ribbon is left over? Well, we have one-fourth of one-sixth. We think there's one-fourth of a one-sixth meter piece left over. The word of is a clue word to multiply. You need to remember that. If it says one-fourth of a number, that means one-fourth times that number. We do one-fourth times one-six for one-fourth of one-six. We multiply straight across, we get one twenty-fourth meter. So I want you to remember, if you ever see something like one-third of fifteen, it means one-third times fifteen. Think of the word of for the multiplication symbol. If you see one-ninth of three-eighths, it means one-ninth times three-eighths. Okay, we finished this lesson. Our next one is going to be 4.2d. We're going to talk about real-world division. We're going to look at division equations and think of real-world situations for them. Please hit the like button if you understood the lesson so I know. And have a super great day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.